Hello everyone, welcome to the Ponderosa. And today in this video, I'm gonna show you the difference, quick like, between three types of solar panel technology. There's a lot of solar panels out there. There's a lot of questions that people have, such as what's the difference between monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film amorphous solar technology. So in this video, I'll try to keep it brief and give you just the key facts of each one because there's a dollar difference in these, there's an efficiency difference, and there's definitely a size difference. You know, solar panels, the, the space is a premium, okay? Space on the top of your RV or on the top of your house comes at a premium. Sometimes you don't have a lot of space or you wanna make the most of the space that you have. Sometimes you're not concerning yourself with all the space or space you don't have. And uh, sometimes you just want cheap. So let's get into the three different types of solar panel technology here. Okay, the first one you're gonna see is the one here on my right, which appears black. And this is called monocrystalline. And the reason it's monocrystalline is because the silicon is sourced from one single source or wafer of silicon. And it gives you a black appearance, a uniform color. And at the same time, what you'll notice on the monocrystalline cells is the fact that each corner of the cell has an angle cut. So you see a lot of white space here in the solar panel and there's a uh, there's a method of that, that uh, is the method of cutting those solar or silicon wafers. And uh, that's one of the noticeable differences when you're looking visually at a monocrystalline. But a monocrystalline panel, well, that's the most efficient, okay? When you're talking one single source of silicon, the monocrystalline are the most efficient because it's a little costlier to manufacture. It's a little more cost, you know, per watt for monocrystalline. And the size, uh, you know, depending on how many cells are in an arrangement, you know, monocrystal will give you the best uh, efficiency per square foot. Now, again, if you have miles and miles of acreage and you're not concerned about how much you can put, well, that's what we're going to get to later in the video. So monocrystal, and this is a new power, N-E-W-P-O-W-A. The link is in the description. This is a new power from Amazon, and I found that their solar panels are pretty well constructed for the price. They are pretty, you know, solid. I haven't given them the test of time yet out in the sun for years, but, you know, they do seem like they are pretty solid design panels. Here's the back of the panels here. They have MC4 connectors, positive and negative. Here it is here, new power. This is a 175 watt panel. Open, uh, the operating voltage is 17 volts and the operating current is 10.29 amps. So a pretty decent cell. I think this one cost about $160 on Amazon. The link is in the description. The second type would be called polycrystalline. Now, if you can see this in the shimmering light, while I have sunlight, you can see it looks kind of like a mix matched, not solid looking confetti. And it's got a bluish uh, tint to it compared to the monocrystal that's black. And the reason is, there's a whole different process on how they make this, you know, manufacture these cells with the silicon. Less processing, uh, crystals used to solidify it, and in turn, what happens is you have a blotched, confetti looking bluish color. Now what does that mean? So you're, you're putting less money into manufacturing it, which means you, it, the cells are costing less, but at the same time, they're less efficient. And the reason is, let's say, you know, if you look at this, okay, that they're not one solid piece. So let me do this with leaves here real quick. Let's, let's go like this. You got, you got one leaf. Let's pretend this leaf is conductive, one piece. Now, that would be a monocrystalline. Now, let's say you wanted to make a polycrystalline. So you'd go like, you know, it'd be like, kind of like this, okay? Now, what's happening is, you could push all that, you know, together, right? But in, in reality, where the different silicon is meeting, it, it, there's gaps and, and possibly not 100% conductive surfaces there. You know, there's, it's not one solid piece. Therefore, it is, you're losing a little bit of efficiency between the pieces that would be solidified together. Does that make sense in a visual redneck style in the backyard? So, 
a polycrystalline would be made up of multiple sources with less processing and that's why you get that bluish color now that a lot of people say that lining your house with this polycrystalline would not look aesthetically pleasing in direct sunlight it kind of look caca you know with the blue shiny the older polycrystalline man they had chunks of black in there sparkles and pieces of gold i mean they really looked you know ob obtrusive but these these aren't too bad i mean polycrystalline's come a long way uh recently and although it is not as 100 percent as efficient as efficient as a monocrystalline or monocrystalline it's come a long way so cheaper manufacturing cheaper sourcing no angle cuts on the corners okay and to to recap on that that something to do with without being an expert something to do with you see the bus bars and you have the angles cut so rather than having all of the you know the the, the energy is going to is going to flow to the bus bars by cutting the corners off like this i guess it kind of gets a, a, a shorter path or a a more defined path on the bus bars without losing it in in the very corners of the solar does that make sense that that's something that i read about uh and there's a there's a method that starts with a C on doing that but that that has to do with efficiency and you can notice on the polycrystalline they don't have that okay we're really not interested in uh, spending a lot of money and time producing these so in that in that turn you're losing a little bit of efficiency but the cost is less so this is only a 100 watt polycrystalline that's a 175 watt monocrystalline uh, if you had both 175 watt panels this one might be $20 cheaper and in doing so, um, you can calculate, you know, all your square footage and the cost of all the solar per square foot will be cheaper for polycrystalline at a fraction of the efficiency being lost based, you know, from poly to mono. Uh, and you know what? You can make your own panels as well. You can find polycrystalline cells all day long on eBay, individual two volt or half volt cells uh, all day in stacks uh, on Amazon as well. And you can do the same thing with mono, but the poly will be a little less efficient but you're saving a few bucks. New power, okay? Comes with the MC4 connectors on it. So 100 watt, 17 volt, basically both these are 12 volt panels, but the operating voltage is 17 when it's open, or you know, open circuit voltage is uh, 20. You always wanna have more on solar than your battery because you want to you know, have a little bit of a buffer between you know, losing a few of efficiency. You don't wanna have a 12 volt panel the second you get any kind of leaf or uh, cloud, it's gonna drop below the, the rating. So that's why they're rated a little bit higher. That's a 100 watt panel. The link is also in the description. And this panel for a 100 watt new power polycrystalline was about $84. Now the third type is what they call thin film or amorphous. There's a couple different names for it. A thin film solar cell is about the least efficient. Now you can see here, this is a battery bank that has solar charge capability. This is a uh, GR, Giardello or Giardelli, whatever you call it. Got it on Amazon as well. I'll try to find a link of something like this. And I hope this storm really doesn't wipe me out over here. It's getting nasty outside. Um, so this is a thin film. Now notice that the, the corners are cut off like I showed you on monocrystalline, but this can be bent, okay? This is thin film. Now this is the most uh, cost effective or the cheapest yet the least efficient. You know, that thin film right here is about 24 watts, right? And I'll show you something here. This is uh, one made by Global Solar in Arizona. And for my ham buddies, you'll appreciate this. I bought this for ham radio at the Orlando Ham Fest for $100. This is a portable fold-up thin film technology solar panel. I think they rate it at about 60 watts. But the, again, this is foldable you know it's it's thin film um, it's uh, least efficient you wouldn't want to line your house with this you wouldn't want to line your RV with something like thin film solar or this this is for the most compact you know if you're talking about portability you don't want to try to take one of these in your backpack right it's not gonna fit it doesn't fold up it's a little bit uh, bigger on the you know big side although it is more efficient than this this is you can see you fold it up into a very small form factor. So it makes it convenient. Uh, but 
what I said before about if you're not worried about the space and the, you know, the, uh, you know, you have a lot of space and you want to save money, that's when thin film comes in. A lot of the companies like FPL or, or uh, you know, power companies, and, and they have 35, 50, 100 acres of solar. They're not really utilizing monocrystal at the cost because they can go with 100 acres of thin film or amorphous and save a lot of money. So basically, instead of trying to fit this in, you know, 100 square foot, they got five acres. They can deal with a less efficient panel per per panel and save them money because they have the room to do it. Me on this travel trailer here, I don't have, you know, space is a premium. So I'm going to cover it with the most efficient that I can, which is monocrystal. And, and uh, now, mind you, these are only 12 volt panels. Okay, all actually all of what you see here is, well, besides this one here, all these are 12 volt panels. And now I'm not going to cover my RV in 12 volt. I'm gonna use 36 volt. See, these are two that I've showed you in a previous video. These are two 36 volt solar cells. They're about six and a half foot tall. Um, and 36 volt at, uh, I think 10 amps, 12 amps, something like that. Let me see. These are by JA Solar. These are uh, 10 amps, 36 volt, 355 watts per panel. But let me show you something. So I got two of these, I get those for about 100 bucks a piece. But I'm gonna show you something else. Now those are gonna be roughly 710 watts, okay? Well, watch what I just picked up today. Now these I picked up today, these are three BP Solar, okay. These are 175 watt monocrystalline panels. And I bought these for $60 a piece. Now, I did tell you in a previous video, Facebook Marketplace is the place to go for solar. I found a solar distributor. Now, these were slightly used. No, these ones were new. They were out in the, uh, in the, the storage, out in the field or the parking lot, okay? These are BP Solar, so I just gave them a quick pressure washing. But these are also 36 volt, 175 watt, at five amps operating current, okay? Three of them, but when you talk about running them into an MPPT solar charge controller, they're gonna be a lot more efficient with three of these at 36 volts, which is gonna step down to my 24 volt battery bank, and the MPPT controller is gonna give me a lot more current and efficiency with the leftover power. So I'm going all 36 volt. Right now I have one, two, three, plus the two 355 watt panels, plus uh, two more 100 watt 36 panels uh, that I'm gonna be picking up. And then I have the other ones, uh, the 12 volt panels, and those are going to be uh, for just the front coach batteries. In the meantime, these were 60 a piece, and guess what? I'm gonna go back, buy a couple more of these as well, and I'm gonna make a video at that place and show you. They got 400, 500 watt panels. They got all kinds of stuff, and that's a lot cheaper than going on Amazon, uh, unless you're just looking at one, like the new power in the back. If you're just looking for one nice new 12 volt panel, uh, the links are in the description, but 36 volt panels here. I'm gonna have well over 1500 watts when I'm done, probably closer to 1600 watts with the charge controller and the battery bank. So uh, you can tell all these are monocrystalline and uh, I'm gonna clean them up a little bit more. I gave them a quick power washing, but because they were sitting in the uh, sun outside, I got a little bit of mold and mildew. So for 60 bucks, they all put out about 41, 42 volts open circuit. So uh, they are working and uh, you're gonna see those on the trailer real soon. Now those are 175 watt solar cells. This is the new power. That is a 175 watt solar cell. But the difference is, there's a lot of different types. There's uh, this is a 72 cell panel, and it's a 60 cell panel. So when you count this, it's 15 cells. One, two, three, down times four rows equals 60. But this is 12 cells. One, two, uh, let's see, where am I at? One, two, three, four, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. Now they do, these two have uh, different voltages, uh, but they're still 175 watt, but not comparing a 36 volt to a 12 volt, the idea is sometimes manufacturers have 60 volt panels that will do the same efficiency as 72. And sometimes the 72 volt uh, cell panels have a higher efficiency than a 60 cell. 
But the idea is it's going to cost more for labor to install bigger and heavier panels. And sometimes the bigger, heavier panels are cheaper than the 60 cell panels. But, um, you know, rooftop installations, you know, when space is not a factor, you can go for a cheaper one even if it's larger. When space is a factor, you can go for smaller ones that have less cells that have the same output or efficiency. But it's not necessarily the amount of cells on here that make the efficiency or output. It's the efficiency and quality of the cells themselves. Um, if, you know, JA Solar or Evergreen or Kyocera cells are 24% efficient and say the, you know, uh, BPs are 20 efficient, you know, uh, individual types of silicon cells would be more efficient between panels. That's where your efficiency comes in. I think these are rated at 17% efficiency, but I think these are 20, uh, if I can remember correctly. So, you know, that's uh, another factor there is the, the size, you know, what 60 versus 72, which one do I want? Well, if they're the same efficiency and same voltages and outputs, you're probably going to want more of the smaller panels, which would be easier to install, less footprint. Uh, if space doesn't matter, get the cheaper ones, even if they're bigger. All right, one more fun fact here, non-technical. Solar panels are in the sun all the time, right? It's where they benefit, maximum sun, but they lose efficiency when they get hot. It's very important to mount these with some sort of airflow, if you can, with stand-up brackets on the trailer to keep some air moving through, but they're gonna get hot, they're gonna start losing efficiency. Now, let's pretend both of these are a 100 watt panel. Now let's pretend when they get hot, they're gonna lose 5% of power when they're hot. So let's say a 100 watt panel each, 5% because they're hot, you're looking at 95 watts total. Now then let's add another 10% efficiency lost because that's polycrystalline, just for an example. Now you're talking about 15 watts of a polycrystalline that's hot versus uh, five watts of a monocrystal when it's hot. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta think of the efficiency you're gonna lose because it's polycrystal, and then the efficiency you're gonna lose because it's hot. And that will give you an idea, should you spend an extra few bucks per panel for monocrystal, or does it not mean that much to you? But they will get hot. There is a more scientific way of knowing how much you're gonna lose um, when you're, you know, when they're hot. So that's it there to keep it simple. Thanks for watching everybody, I got more videos on the way. I figured if I learn and I can bring it out to video as I've done on my original YouTube channel, we can all learn and you can learn what you want. Yell at me for the stuff you don't think is right. And we all have something to watch that's better than Joe Biden versus Trump. Take it easy everybody.